Yeah, thanks everyone. So I think I'll get straight into it. So uh, I'm talking about OpenCL, saving parallel programmers pain today. Um, so so a, quick, a quick recap. So we all know that parallel programming is of increasing importance in an era of multi-core devices where, where core, cores aren't getting faster, but they're adding more of them. So engineer, hardware engineers have left us um, uh, a bit of work to do. So, so as the trend is to add more cores, um, uh, and typical CPUs contain, you know, one to high, uh, one to twelve high-frequency cores, um, but each each vendor tries to push their own um, specific language to, to target these platforms. So Intel promotes Silk, Silk Plus um, or Thread Building Blocks. Thankfully, they also support OpenMP and OpenCL. Um, GPUs have thousands of low-frequency low cores, um, and NVIDIA promotes CUDA. Uh, thankfully, AMD mostly uses um, uh, OpenCL as well. And, and integrated systems on the chip uh, with accelerator devices. So Texas Instruments uh, have, have a Keystone 2, which is an ARM uh, A15 quad-core processor with eight DSPs on the same system on chip. Um, and they're pretty cool, but, but they, they, their main line of development at the moment, they use uh, Texas code generation tools um, and, and uh, DSP compiler, uh, CL6X. Um, so it's not easy to successfully run code on many cores. So, so what is OpenCL? So, so OpenCL isn't the Java of high performance computing. Um, <laughs> uh, OpenCL is, so, or Open Compute Language is an open standard which defines a common C API. Uh, so it's pretty low level. Uh, OpenCL, to, to quote Kronos Group, is the first open, royalty-free standard for cross-platform cross parallel programming of modern processors found in personal computers, servers, and handheld embedded devices. Um, so if, if C or C++ isn't your, um, is, isn't, isn't to your liking, there are a variety of wrappers ar around the API for other language support, including uh, Python, Lisp, Java, Pascal, Erlang, Go, Rust, Node.js, Lua, all the languages. You could write your own bindings to OpenCL. Um, so but the, the main idea with, uh, and, and the benefit to doing something in OpenCL, it's, it's not the easiest language to get started in. Um, but, but once, once you have it going, you can write once, and if you do a good job of it, you can run it pretty, pretty well on, on CPUs, DSPs, GPUs, um, FPGAs, uh, and, and any, any type of uh, amalgamation with these system on chips we're seeing now. Uh, okay, so, so OpenCL is a pretty, it's a pretty mature, uh, mature language. It's not a spring chicken anymore. Uh, and, and they tend to add, add or revise the spec every year or two. Um, and it's well supported across most, most, most vendors that produce anything with a processor. Okay, so I'll try to motivate this a little bit. Um, so over the past nine months, I've migrated some ultrasound simulation code from, um, from OpenMP to CUDA. And we used CUDA initially um, because we were interested in using some of their uh, CUDA FFT, so their Fast Fourier Transform Library, uh, and their Kublas um, basic linear algebra subprograms library. Um, but unfortunately, once, once, once we moved into into, into using CUDA, we're locked into NVIDIA's ecosystem, which is fine at the moment. They, they have some in, interest, interesting, um, they, they have some of the best performing hardware for our particular applications. But what happens, you know, uh, two years down the track when the, when the next vendor produces something cool? Um, I, I, I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> um, so, 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 I mean, when, when we're locked into a specific vendor, it fragments the software development industry. Um, I don't want to have to rewrite all my code for, for, another, for, for, for another, another target platform uh, two years down the track. So, so think of the children. It's bad enough I have to migrate my code to another vendor and, and in, moved into their lockdown ecosystem. But it's unacceptable to leave it for someone else. Um, OK. So, so I'll try to, so, so there's a plan. Um, so don't, don't worry, there is a plan. Uh, throughout this talk, I'll discuss a simple application that will benefit from parallel execution and the process of tuning serial code. From there, I'll prototype, some, I'll, I'll prototype parallelism with OpenMP, and then move from that prototype to production OpenCL code. Uh, and I'll show you how, to write, how, how you can write your kernels pretty well once, and it'll run on a variety of, of interesting platforms. Um, OK, so, so I'll motivate it. Uh, as, so, so the application is a continuous wavelet transform, and it's useful for signal anal analysis, speech recognition, earthquake detection, bird and whale uh, audio signal classification, deep sea exploration, and music restoration. So it's, it's, it's useful for a variety of fields, but, but unfortunately it is uh, order, order n cubed, 
and, and larger sizes generally uh, give us the, the most interesting um, um, applications. But thankfully, parallelism can help stave off this, this, this uh, polyn uh, polynomial growth um, in computation. So this is what the, the CWT uh, does. We, 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 so this is only uh, in a one-dimensional signal. Uh, we feed in a one-dimensional signal, and we're generating uh, uh, a continuous wavelet transform, which is two dimensions. We get an additional redundancy, but it's over, so we get scale and translation. So it's really good at visualization. Um, and this is computed by, uh, so we have a mother wavelet on the left. In this case, it's a Mexican hat. It looks like a hat. Um, and on the right is our input signal. Uh, and and at each, for each point in that, in that grid you saw, uh, we want to generate, we want, we want to store the result of, we want to generate a daughter wavelet, um, which is that mother wavelet sort of squashed or, or scaled to a different size and shifted across the signal. So we, so we scale, um, and, and then we, we, we move it through the signal. And, and once we get to each point, we would do like, like a filtering operation. Um, where we multiply each, each coefficient together and sum the result. And then we'd, we'd store that result so that, for that unique scale um, and translation. Okay, so the, the prototype, the, uh, so the computational kernel was initially written in R. Um, and, and then I, I tried to make this as, as, as C-like as possible, uh, even though R is terrible at doing iteration. Um, they even say in, 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 in their documentation, do not use iterative methods in R. Um, so so then, then I mapped it to C++. So, so this is the R code. Uh, can everyone see that okay? Uh, I, I, I tried to make it as big as possible. Um, so the Mexican hat function in, in the top. So uh, the, the most important portion is there's three nested for loops. Uh, so for the outer for loop, there's uh, A is, is scale. The middle for loop is B is translation. And the inner for loop is I, which is the convolution, which, is, which iterates across the whole signal and does point-wise multiplication and a sum. Um, OK, and then, so that maps pretty well to C++. Um, so there's only a little bit of tuning. I mean, the, the function's inlined um, because it's called at each iteration. That's quite expensive. Uh, and oh, we just, just, just move some computational re uh, computationally expensive portions out of the inner loops. Um, so, so this is as bare bones as you can get it. Um, okay. So R versus C++. So R is terrible iteration, as I said before. Um, so for two to the power of seven elements long, R takes 18 seconds, or 18.3 seconds, and C++ takes uh, 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 40 milli milliseconds, um, <laughs> which is roughly 458 times faster, but why stop at that? Um, because, I mean, even with one, one, one thread or one, one, one core on... Um, in, in C++, this still takes about a week to compute. So maybe we can help alleviate this with some parallelism. Okay, so if we, so, so CPUs granularity of parallelism. Uh, so CPUs have fewer general purpose cores, and, and so, so we want to have, since we have fewer cores, we want them to make, do as much work as possible, and we evenly divide it. Um, so we want to have heavyweight cores that do lots of, uh, heavyweight threads that do lots of work, and fewer threads, because we don't want to do, we don't want to do context switching. So, so we have our set a scale and translation. Thread one will operate on the, f on the first scale. And it'll, it'll go away and do its own business and, and, and do a convolution at each translation, like so. Um, we also have, say we have four threads in, 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 this, in this processor. So we have you know, thread ones on, on, on scale one, thread two on scale two, and so on. And what happens if thread one finishes earlier? It, it's going to stride, so that's, that's the behavior we want. And it'll, it'll, it'll the, 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 so that's the, that's the coarsest granularity of parallelism we can use. It's either that or we do the exact same thing with translation, um, but, but, but uh, because that's in the middle loop of that, of that for loop, uh, that it imposes a barrier at every step, for every scale. Um, okay, so, so we can prototype parallelism pretty, pretty easily with OpenMP. So OpenMP offers uh, programmers a, f a simple and flexible interface to parallelize code. It offers a runtime API, so we can call like uh, OMP set num threads, and we can set the number of threads we want to use in, um, using, the, using the runtime API, so we can change how many CPUs are in use. Um, and directives, so we can use um, OpenMP pragmas if, if, if your compiler supports them. 
uh, which is great because you can turn it off and see if your serial code works, because I'm notoriously bad at, bre at breaking my code when I try to make it run in parallel. Um, OK, so this is even harder to see. But basically, it's the exact same region I showed you before, but with the Pragma OMP Parallel 4 on the top. OK? Um, and I, I, I don't like what, what OpenMP does behind the scenes. So I explicitly say this is all shared memory. And you generally have to be careful when you use shared memory on writes, um, because only CWT data is written, but it has a unique identifier for each, each thread in A. Um, so I, I, and uh, schedule static is basically the one one, one, um, one scale each, and it'll, and it'll stride. Uh, okay. So, uh, this, so, so this is over 128 points of, uh, long, so our signal's 128 points long, and this is on a Xeon uh, X5650. It has six physical cores and six hyper-threaded cores, and it's not surprising we see the, the sweet spot is about 12 threads, so 12 OpenMP threads maps, maps to you know, 12, 12 cores on, on this Intel processor. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not about nine times faster. Uh, but does it scale for bigger data sizes? Because we really want to get up to two to the 13 um, sort, of, sort, of, sort of ballpark, and not really. Um, it can do 1,024 grid points pretty quick. But uh, what about using different hardware? We can, we can try to make this faster using, using different, different hardware. So enter OpenCL. So we can write once and run anywhere with, with OpenCL. Um, uh, unfortunately, at the moment, the lowest common denominator b between all the, all the pl target platforms I'm looking at is, uh, is they're running OpenCL version 1.1, um, which still uses the relatively low-level C API. Um, so I'll, I'll get into a little bit of the nitty-gritty. I'm not going to show you lots of OpenCL code, because uh, thankfully, that's copy and paste, and it's pretty much the same for all projects. Um, but but the, the principal component is there's, there's, there's two Two, um, two programs you have to actually write to, to get your OpenCL code running. Uh, so there's a host and device side. Uh, so the host side has a platform layer and a runtime layer. And, and the platform layer is respons responsible for querying the platform and querying the device and establishing a command queue. So I mean, different platforms would be if I have, if I have NVIDIA cards on, on my system and I also have uh, an Intel, Intel processor. Um, so, and then you spe specifically say which, which, which cards you want to use. Uh, and then the host has to deal with uh, runtime operations, like it creates memory buffers and compiles the kernel, sets, sets the arguments, and executes it. Um, but, but, but like I said, fear not. Uh, most of this is copy and paste between projects. So you can f feel free to use, uh, use my code as a starting point if you want, or any other on GitHub. Um, so, so the kernel on the device. So, so the kernel is the other program that's actually being run on, on, on these accelerator devices. And it's a little bit more interesting. So, so the, the kernel code is a restricted subset of C. The underscore underscore kernel qualifier declares a function that can be executed on the device. Um, and, and the underscore underscore global address space is memory that's mapped directly on, on, the, on, the, on, the, um, on the device. So, so the host would create global memory, and the kernel can use it, and it's, ex it's explicit. Um, and and, and uh, so we can, call, we can call functions from the kernel, and general math functions are supported. So you can see I can still inline my Mexican hat function, um, and I, I, I pass any, anything that's array. All these are stored globally on the device. Um, yeah, so, so these, are, these are vectors, and this is basically a matrix, the output value. And so this is the computational region. Again, this is all exactly the same for the for loops. Um, but the, the, the only thing that, that I'd really suggest is OpenCL kernel compilation also supports uh, preprocessor directives. So you, 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 can, you can target the, the granularity of parallelism once. So if you do a good job at writing your kernel once, you can just change these flags from the host side code without ever revising it, because revising these kernels it takes a bit of work to think, figure out what's going on. You really only want to do it once. Um, so there's a couple of runtime uh, calls that the, 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 the device can, can use on the kernel. Um, so you can get global ID so, and, and followed by a numerical argument. And the numerical argument specifies the dimension of the computation. Um, so zero, in, in this case, would be the x or scale dimension. And one is the translation dimension. Um, OK. And also, get global size with, with the dimensional argument specifies 
uh, how, many, how many threads uh, or how many work items are supposed to be running in this work group. Um, so so, so this, this works well in our CPU code because we can work out, okay, from that example, there's four threads in it, get, get global size uh, zero that would return four, and we're, step, we're striding by four every time. Okay, so targeting and tuning on the host. So there's only, once, once you get all the boil, boilerplate OpenCL stuff down, it, it really only comes down to about three lines of code you have to change to run on, 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 on all these devices. Um, so to assess the efficiency of the OpenCL implementation, let's first start and compare against the OpenMP on the same processor. So, so running the code on a CPU is done by specifying the target. C. So when we go CL get device IDs, we're only changing uh, CL device type CPU. So we're targeting what, what, what device we're interested in. Um, next, we specify the granularity of parallelism with those OpenMP um, direct, uh, with, the, with the directives flag, sorry. Uh, so so we, we, we change our compulate, compu um, we, we change our comp compilation flags by commenting out the, the, the inner loop. So instead of doing, instead of striding over the parallel region. And so, so local work size is more for, for threads that work together in a team. And that's really useful on GPUs, but not so much on CPUs. We sort of leave them all to themselves. Um, so this, that's a three-dimensional region. So, a lo lo uh, so the local work size is basically just, just yourself, that just, just one thread to itself. And across the total computation, there's 12 threads in the X dimension uh, and one, one and one across the Y and Z. But, and I don't use Z yet. Um, OK, so comparing OpenMP to OpenCL, so for the wall clock times. Um, so we can see OpenCL is a little bit faster. Uh, but that, 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 that could just be an unfair comparison. It's, it's marginal, and there's an OpenMP um, uh, scheduler that, that has to kick in for that static striding. Um, but, you know, so it goes from nine times faster to ten times faster with OpenCL. But since we know our OpenCL implementation is correct because we can prototype on these CPU cards, uh, on, on, on the CPU, we can, um, we can then just target, target diff different devices, accelerators and, and so on. So how, about, how, does it, how does it do over, over different lengths of data? So, so from now on, I'll, I'll just go over diff different sizes of n for our input vector. Um, so so we'll, we'll, first, we'll first go with CPUs. So I have uh, an i7-2820QM, and that has four, four hardware, four, four physical cores and four hyper-threaded cores. Uh, so, so all the tuning that has to occur is, since we have eight, eight, eight global work items and they're CPUs so they don't play well together, we leave it 111 in the local work group size, and 811 in the global work group size, and again, we still want just this outer level scale, scale loop parallelism. And the same for the, uh, for the X5650, except it has six, six physical cores and six hyperthreaded cores, so we change the global work size to 12. And, and this is how it performs. So uh, profiling, profiling indicates this is a memory bound problem. So we're waiting on, on, on a lot of reads. Uh, lo loads and stores because we don't have you know, regular um, memory access in, in that kernel. Um, so GPUs are really good at hiding memory, um, uh, global memory accesses because context switching is really cheap on a GPU. Uh, so, so you fix it because you, have, you, you can have lots and lots of threads running. Uh, on, on, an, on NVIDIA, it's called a, a warp, or on AMD, it's called a wavefront. Basically, um, there's 60, 64 or th th 32 threads that can be executed at one time on, on these processes. And, and as long as you have a local work group size that's bigger than that, it has to be a multiple of 16, but say you had 128, uh, so, so 32 are going to be executed at once. So those 32 threads can go do their operations. They hit a load. Uh, they're going to wait, wait around for a few cycles. Then the, 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 the runtime will put them to sleep, and then, then another another 16 will go, another 32 will go, and so on. Um, so, so GPU granularity of parallelism. So since, since we only have a small number of, um, small length of the input data, um, G and, and GPUs have, have thousands of these uh, lightweight, lightweight threads, um, they, they should only do a small portion of the work. 
So, so, so uh, more, more, more threads means uh, more context switching, which is cheap on GPUs. So, so on a GPU, we have this ND range. I mean, it's, it's the same on the CPU, but we don't really need it so much. And they all have their own work groups, and they, they have their own localized work items within a work group. Um, but I, so the work groups are mostly used if you have local uh, shared memory between, between threads. So, so threads in that team or that work group. Um, but I, I only use global memory accesses, so I can just query wherever I am in the ND range. So, so now I want to throw, uh, at each grid point, a thread uh, in, in, in whatever teams works out to be optimal. Um, and that's just flag passing, and, and then see how it scales. So to target a GPU on OpenCL, I change that that was CL device type CPU. It's now CL device type GPU. I uncomment this line of code, and now it's, it's parallelizing along both loops and striding along both loops. So if we still had, um, so if the GPU only has a maximum number of cores, we might only set that and it'll stride still. Um, and we build, build, build the kernel and execute it. So I have three different GPUs to compare it against. I have the ATI Radeon HD 6750M, which is in my MacBook. And that, so, so, so this, all, this is all, 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 all fun and games. So the global work size I just set as data length. So that could be N. So if our input, that's as, that's as big as our input signal is, basically. So it's total amount of work that needs to be done. And then uh, how, however these warps are scheduled, um, I'm, I'm doing it on the, the translation loop, so, so that in a, in a loop, uh, the, the middle loop, rather. So that's why, it's a and there's 128, so 128 threads work together to get, their work, to get the job done. So, as one, so if one team is, is waiting on a load, it'll, it'll schedule another team, and, and so on. Uh, then I compare it on a GTX 580. So the only difference is I have 258, uh, uh, two, 256 th uh, threads in a local work group size. And a Tesla K20 with uh, all, the same same configuration as the of the same same tuning flags as the the GeForce 580. Uh, and this is how well it performs. So it's it's pretty interesting because that both both the Tesla card and the GeForce card can compute two to the power of 13 grid points pretty quickly. Um, the Tesla can do it in about 13 seconds. Um, and, and it's not surprising, I mean, this, this Radeon card is, is a mobile processor, and it only, it's only operating at 150 megahertz compared to 1.5 gigahertz of the gaming card, the, the, the Tesla gaming card, and uh, 705 megahertz of the Tesla card, but it has twice as many cores. So, um, so, so, so what about accelerators? So OpenCL can also uh, coordinate accelerator devices just as easily. And these include the uh, Intel Xeon Phi, or the, 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 uh, the 7110P, which has 60 quad-core Pentium cores. So that's 240 work uh, cores. Uh, it's running at 300 watts. And we can compare this against a Texas Instruments Keystone 2 system on chip. That's with the ARM A15 processor and eight DSPs. And that entire system on a chip is operating at 15 watts. Um, so to tune it in OpenCL, CL device type accelerator now, and that's pretty much all you have to do. And uh, because we have, so, so even on the Phi, so, so for the, 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 the Keystone 2 has eight DSPs, and each DSP is treated as, as a thread. So we only, we only set that to eight. Um, but, but we only really need the outer level, outer loop parallelism. Uh, okay, so, so, so here's the configuration for the for the Phi, so it has 240 um, individual cores, so we feed it 240 threads uh, in, in, the, in the x-axis along the scale. And the, uh, the Keystone 2 with eight, because it only has eight DSPs, and this is how it performs. So the Intel, the Xeon Phi is, it, 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 it's, it's, it's pretty quick. Um, I mean, and to do the additional two grid points, it, it, can, do, it, can, do t uh, it can do twice as many grid points before it tanks. But, um, but I think it's, pre it's pretty interesting considering there's an additional, what, 285 watts <laughs> that goes into those, those additional grid points. 
Um, and there's the, there's the uh, comparison on all platforms. Uh, so again, the, the Tesla K20 is the, the best performing device, but I, I, for any, any of the benchmarks I've seen, um, the, te the Tesla's been outperforming um, the Phi lately. Um, and this is just on a log scale. Um, so, 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 I, so in the future, OpenMP 4.0 released accelerated directives, and that should map um, parallel regions to execution on these auxiliary devices. So you can do, uh, instead of doing the hashtag pragma OMP parallel four, you can do hashtag pragma OMP parallel accelerator. Um, and that should map to something that would run automatically on the device. Um, in reality, that'll probably use, that'll probably leverage OpenCL to, to do this. Um, and I think that, that high level abstraction would be sufficient because that's, OpenMP gets away with that level, that granularity of parallelism. Um, but it's not there yet. I think we have to wait a few more years before it'll be supported. Um, in the meantime, uh, I, th I think it's great that all these vendors support, support this open specification. And I, it's, it's a minimal amount of work to get, to get these devices running. Um, you know, it's like th three lines of code had to be changed to, to get this code running on, on these variety of devices. Um, so I think we should all get behind OpenCL. Um, because it's, it's saving us from, uh, it's, it's, it's our, 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 the software development industry is really fragmented by all these proprietary APIs. Um, and, and, and you could almost, you could train monkeys to map code to, to, uh, to, a, to a different language. Um, and, and I think the only reason why CUDA is, 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 pr is pretty prevalent is their pre -rolled, the use of pre-rolled libraries like, um, uh, like, like, like BLAS and FFTs. So we should really try to uh, have an implementation that OpenCL can use. Um, and also, the latest spec of OpenCL came out uh, two months ago, uh, version 2.0. Um, so it allows pipes, dynamic parallelism, shared virtual memory, atomic functions, read, write, image, objects. Um, and so the more people, so, so lately, um, NVIDIA have, seem to be pulling support from, from OpenCL. They, they seem to stop at version 1.1, and it's, it's been quite a few, it's been two years since, since 1.2 came out. And they seem to be really pushing CUDA out, out of their own interests. Um, it, it'd, be, it'd be nice if, if more people could get on the OpenCL bandwagon, um, and, and, and then, then they'll be forced into supporting the latest, latest version of the standard. And, and 2.0 pro provides uh, a nice C++ uh, wrapper API. A nice C++ wrapper API. Um, in, in, instead of uh, writing 40 lines of, of that boilerplate uh, open CL code, uh, it's just pretty much two lines, um, two, two, two lines to coordinate. Yeah. Uh, take home notes, OpenCL is a powerful tool, but don't go charging in. Uh, tools like OpenMP are great at rapidly prototyping different granularities of par parallelism, and you should prototype and profile often. Um, also, a scalable pr parallel program starts out as an efficient serial one. Um, and so thank you, and thank you to NVIDIA for donating um, some of the Tesla, Tesla cards. Uh, and Texas Instruments for the OpenCL runtime for the Keystone 2, and CSIRO for access to the Xeon Phi. Um, thanks. There's plenty of time for questions. Uh, more of an observation. You saw all the different binary drivers last year. Um, like AMD has been working on an open source open CL driver for a while. A while. Yep. But they have real problems finding out it's wrong. There's just like that, there's, there's got this chicken and egg which like it's got L, an L of AMD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what uh, AMD cards have been. Yeah, pitched for lately. Please repeat the question again. Uh, Oh, oh. Um, uh, so, 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 so you, there, there's a lack of op available OpenCL test test code yeah, to, to be run. Yeah. Actually, test them, but they're yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so so, so I'm, I'm going to push this out on GitHub soon. I'll, I'll push it out once I finish the, I'll, I'll add, a, add one with the flag when I push it out on GitHub. Um, but, but I think there's a significant problem in that OpenCL has been around for five years and there aren't many applications that are written in it. Um, it's a pretty, pretty low-level, um, complicated kettle of fish, but, but um, yeah, I, I, there definitely should be more applications written, written in it. Um, yeah? Um, I believe you said it's subject of your PhD students. Yes. Um, I want to make the observation that you also said it's going to take a long time for GCC 5 to start to influence some of this stuff. Um, there are many PhD pieces that have ended up abandoned because the author started contributing to open source. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying this might be your future. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, yeah? Uh, is it safe to run untrusted OpenCL code? So, like, if you provide a GPU for VMs to run, is it safe to let them run OpenCL code on GPU? Uh, uh, is, is, is OpenCL, so the question was, is OpenCL safe to run, um, well, is, it, is, it sa is it safe to run untrusted? Um, sort of. Um, the, the worst I've, I've, I've been able to do maliciously uh, on, on, on myself is um, not, not release control of my device context or use up the whole, whole memory buffer so I can't get redraws on the screen. Um, I suppose I, it makes sense you, you, you could, ac I mean, you can access, um, fro f yes. Um, so if, 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 if they map, so I mean, you'd be able to see on the, on the host if, if, if you mean by if you mean by malicious, because you have to set up global memory between, between the card and, and the host, you could see on the host side whether it's staging anything to the card. But if you mean just like bring down your system, you can kill your, you can kill your terminal pretty quick. I mean, you can kill your, your um, display pretty quick. More of us, it seems like an interesting business opportunity to offer computing power to VM customers. But that obviously you'd have to work with the API and make sure it develops in that direction. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, M M M you can, you can you Amazon Amazon Web Services. They 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 share. I mean, they you you can, you can get GPU resources there, can't you? Yeah, they're very they're very sure. Yes. yes. Um, so in Kuda, um, you have to particularly when you've got um, less threads um, available than you have calls to run it on. Yeah. You, you spend a lot of effort on tuning the memory accesses to make efficient use of the application. Yeah. Um, does that still apply in the or does that just No, no, um, ab absolutely. Uh, 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 so, 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 so do you still have to worry about memory accesses like, like you do in CUDA on OpenCL? Absolutely. Everything you do in CUDA is, is more low level than OpenCL. Everything's more explicit. Um, but, I mean, I, 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 I didn't, didn't, didn't uh, deal with contiguous blocking of, uh, blocking of memory either. Um, but, but yeah, yes, it's, it's not automated in OpenCL. Yep. How long do you find OpenCL applies to problems when you're crunching a live data stream? My interest, for example, is parallelizing, parallelizing large database aggregate queries. OK. Um, oh, so I have a terrible memory. At, uh, <laughs> uh, you, 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 yeah. I just yeah. Um, so, so you can absolutely use GPUs to process streams of, of data, um, and I, I imagine it works just as well as you would with with CUDA. Um, and you, you can set up a stream and, 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 and keep 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 feeding feeding values into, into the stream. Um, but I, I haven't dealt much with much with streaming data on GPUs. So. Anyone else? Yep. Ah, that, 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 that is an interesting uh, observation that, um... There's an open source project for Intel GPUs uh, that does have OpenCL support. There's an OpenCL sort of for uh, Intel GPUs uh, called uh, Venue. Yeah. Well, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay. Cool. Thank you. Th thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Folks.